everybody. Welcome back to the 90th Minute. We are your hosts. We got Greg, Lucas, Waz, and myself, Liam. Today, if you are new to the podcast, please make sure you are subscribed here on YouTube and hit like on this video. It helps us out a ton. Huge, huge thank you for all the support our channel has been getting recently. The career mode, you guys are absolutely crushing it. All four of us and Maddie as well. We all really appreciate you guys. If you're listening to us on audio apps, Spotify, Google, Apple, anywhere else, thank you very much. Leave a like, leave a follow, all that good stuff. We love that you guys are joining in on the audio apps. We know we focus mainly on YouTube, but we love the support we are getting on there. It has been a very big week of football. We're going to get into that. But before we do, Wazzy, if you take a look to your left, Wazzy, you can look out your window. It's very nice outside, so bright. isn't it? It's very bright. nice. You know what that means, guys? Canada, it's springtime, boys. So our lovely partners over at Manscaped are offering you a fantastic deal for spring break, you know. Again, out there, you know, the, the snow's melting. You want to maybe, like, go on a on an outside walk, you know, COVID safety protocol. You know, you need to get your lady friends or your male friends, whoever you want. Get them involved with you. Clean yourself up with the lovely Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped. The ceramic coated blades. You will not cut yourself. It's the world's best in male grooming below the waist, your chest, your face, if you want to. Your back. We all know what you got to do. The motor, 7,000 RPMs. It's waterproof. It's got a light. It's great. You love to see it. Use code 90th at checkout at manscaped.com. You get 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you, Wazino, baby. <laughs> they said, use code 90th. You get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com. There's a lot more 3.0. There's a bunch of other male grooming products, including fantastic lotions, uh, deodorants, uh, everything. Honestly, check them everything. out. Great website, great products, great prices. Great deal if you use code 90th at checkout. Yeah, Anyways. use code 90th. Anyways. If, you, if uh, for the ones on audio apps, you guys don't know what's happening, I was kissing the camera. So we're he was, he was. Kisses, kiss. Good um, idea to do. Uh, so, uh, this has been a very football, big day. Yeah. Very big day in, yeah. uh, in Premier League football. Uh, we're recording on Sunday. Week. Yeah. Um, let's big talk matches. very first off about the Manchester Derby. We did do a live stream over on Twitch. As we are recording this, Spurs are playing Crystal. Yes. Through one Spurs uh, 63rd minute, so we'll cover yes. that later once that game's finished. So, yeah, let's yeah. get to the Manchester we did, Derby, we did biggest stream game of the weekend, on arguably. Twitch. Yeah. Uh, Twitch.tv slash the 90th minute official. Link will be down in the description as well. The links for our TikTok or Instagram, all that good stuff. But yes, was it your baby? He had a it's great It's a good time. week. It's a good week, isn't it, Greg? Oh, beautiful. Oh, it, it very much is. I just. <laughs> we're we're, 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 we're dancing in paradise. <laughs> We're dancing in paradise, but yes, uh, I'm not going to be too big of an asshole this podcast because, I mean, Lucas, I'm sorry, man. You, things happen to your team is, again, but uh, yeah, just happy to get the result against City. Who wouldn't? I mean, with the way they've been playing in the last 20 matches to finally defeat them, to put an end to that winning streak, mm-hmm. uh, it feels great. Especially and Solskjaer, just, had, you I don't know. know. Especially away from home for United. Uh, and, and, yeah. Yeah. Ole, Ole is now uh, the first manager in United's history to win each of his first three away games against City. He's done it again. There you go. My uh, manager! It did, it did start very early for Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes yeah. scores yeah. a penalty in the second minute. Um, it was Anthony Martial who was taken out in the of box course. by Gabriel yeah. Jesus only like 30 seconds into the match. Um, it was a penalty, clear cut. It was a yeah. dumb decision by, by Gabriel Goal. Um Jesus, your squeaky chair, man. <laughs> Hashtag get Lucas a new chair. But it was a good performance from United. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, because he was just trying to, he gave away the ball, so he really wanted yes. to get it back, win it back for the team, and he just, it was a stupid mistake given away. It was, it was dumb. And there was like four City 100%. defenders running. There was no need to make a, a, a tackle there. Um, but United, you know, they, they performed well. I would like to mm-hmm. say that Manchester City were definitely the dominant well, team. They no, had 100%. possession, they had control. And with the way United played against Crystal over the week, a uh, much better performance, much more exciting. Uh, that game, by the way, was just so dull. It was like watching paint dry. Uh, funny bad. enough, also, United are now unbeaten in 22 Premier League away games. 14 wins, 8 draws. Uh, quite the run. I know a lot of teams have actually struggled at home this se- season, it seems. Liverpool, I'm just looking at you. Um, but, uh... <laughs> Look, I'm not complaining. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to do. Harry Maguire, great game. Great game from Dean Henderson, Luke Shaw. Just a good team performance, in my opinion, to, to you know, defeat it City. Yeah, I mean, Luke Shaw, yeah. I think Luke Shaw was really, really good. Um, he has scored the second goal for you guys in the 50th minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, a low-driven shot with the left foot into the corner. Um, 
City, as I said, City had possession, they had control. They didn't create the best chances, though. I thought their chances on target were not the... Uh, not the City chance that we're used to. Well, I, I feel like they had a lot of clear-cut chances. They just could have put it in the back of the net, and it, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully it, they didn't. It just seems Martial. like the bounces, the bounces yeah. just didn't go for yeah. them today, honestly. Martial should have had at least one, probably two. He had the header yeah, that was... That. Poor, and he was one on one with Ederson and put it right at the keeper. But um, but overall, was I, I mean, no, it's just a good performance I mean, for United. Yeah. You got a, you got a, a, a clean sheet away. You know, Marshall you know. could have made it three 0 easily, but uh, for whatever reason, he doesn't know how to score anymore. But he did have a good game. I thought I thought he played you know better, playing a bit more deeper, creating some chances. Uh, I think Rashford has a bit of an injury. I don't know how serious it is, but yeah, and honestly, injury, to yeah. beat City. Without Pogba, I'll take that actually, because Pogba has been pretty important in these matches in the last couple seasons. So I'm happy. Who wouldn't, right? For for City, um, I think if, if you're Pep Guardiola, you'll be looking at why did we have so much possession but not create the goal scoring chances that were yeah. required. To I win think this they game. created some chances, but like it just didn't fully go on. Like Foden had a chance there where I think he got deflected. He uh, Raheem Sterling had a great chance where uh, mm-hmm. was it Lindelof that fell or something? Legs. And so. it also went through his legs. Yeah. Actually, also another fun statistic from the match: um, among the 67 managers Pep Guardiola has faced more than three times across all competition as a top-flight boss, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is the only one to have beaten the Spaniard four more often than he has lost to Guardiola. So that's interesting. I, I know I put his at the wheel but and, and when Pep, don't I do that? Pep, Pep can't handle Ole. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of interesting statistics coming out of that game. Should we should we talk more about this match or do you want to move on to the rest of Sunday? Let us know in the comments below if you're watching us on YouTube, your thoughts on the Manchester Derby, who deserved to win, just overall general thoughts. You know, start I, a conversation. I just, I just don't I just don't think there was a standout player yeah. per se. It's just, it was just a good but, hey, performance. The one, thing, it, one thing is it wasn't boring. I'm happy with that. Boring. Um, it, wasn't it wasn't a nil-nil. Nil. I don't know. City seemed to always beat us in the Carabao Cup, but recently in the league, it's kind of been either draws or a win for United. So I'll take that. Um, let's move on to the other big result uh, this <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Fulham. Fulham. Who Fulham. would have Fulham. thought Greg would be on the other end of a victory against Liverpool? Lucas, I know, man. I know. It just hasn't been I- the last couple weeks haven't been yours, man. Uh, let's just In get your mud. thoughts from Greg first, the yes. victor. Well, <laughs> first, it's just, it, not that you see it coming, but it's just, Liverpool just wasn't, they're not the same team at home. They're not the same no. team in general right now, the past, what, mm-hmm. month? Like, ever since 2021. And I was very confident, honestly, going into this game. I'm still nervous because it's Liverpool, Mo Salah. Big but. dick Liverpool. Greg, that's big dick energy right there. That's what that was. I'm confident going to Anfield. There you go. Full, yeah. No, it's <laughs> I should have confidence in my team. I think we're, I think we're a very good team that shouldn't be where we are in the standings yeah. right now. Honestly, that is fair. And the first half we gave it to Liverpool and we squeaked out a goal right before halftime. And honestly, Liverpool was all over us in the second half, which is, I'm not surprised. But we played a very good defensive game, which we've been good defensively all season. So. Uh, I did not get to watch this game live. It was too early for me, but uh, it was a good it was a good victory for for Fulham, like you said. I mean, you had that goal right before halftime. Well, let's, Mo Salah let's caught sleep here. Wait, wait. I, uh, I was just gonna comment. I saw the highlights as well. It just looked like a good team performance from Fulham. Finally, like, they Salah beat kept, a top team. Well, yeah, guys, yeah. we haven't heard from the man himself. Oh, Salah, look, Liverpool, okay, Liverpool yeah, let's, Lucas, let's, man, let's, what do you want? I mean, Fulham definitely, I think, deserved the victory. I think. Liverpool each week have been going with the same, pretty much same lineup each time. A 4-3-3. Nothing really working. Nothing really working out. I think while there's some promising signs in the second half, we saw Liverpool hit the post. They um, like got in behind a few times, but Fulham for the most part played very well. It was a great goal by Lamina. I think Liverpool... I think they just need to take some risks now because what they've been doing with this 4-3-3 well, formation isn't working. And Liam. Ah, oh, Liam. Liverpool lost. I guess it's Thiago's fault. Oh, wait. He didn't play. 
with the. Well, and that's what sorry. That's another. That's Thiago? something I wanted to. Because you're the one who always mentions Tiago to me. <laughs> that's something I wanted I to just, mention though, real what? quick. <laughs> Was Lucas? What did you think when you saw that Liverpool lineup? I thought okay. Uh, I thought, well, the back line isn't the best, <laughs> so Fulham should what, be able so to get something. I, Fabinho on the bench, Mane on the bench. Was Firmino on the bench? He, had, he was out with an injury. injury. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, he's out. Yeah. He was out with an injury. Okay, but like those are big name players. Jota not was in that back lineup. though. Diego Jota Trent. was back. Jota was back. Well, great. Right, We've been but, playing a lot of football. Lots of it has not been going well, and we have Champions League coming up, which I, we're, we I, do I, have I know they're advantage. just uh, resting I mean, and. League. Trying to change tactics, I'm sure too. And I mean, we didn't really change tactics in this game. <laughs> it was literally. I just mean players change the teams. Personnel, there. yes, I think. But like I was mentioning earlier, Thiago, people have been giving him so much criticism. Well, why isn't Wijnaldum getting any criticism? He's been playing in all these yeah. games as well, and he's done jack all, honestly. And this yeah. guy has been at the club, and he's his contract expiring at the club as well. Lucas. Lucas, I told you this six months ago. Genie Wijnaldum's heart is no longer in Liverpool. He wants to move to Barcelona. You're playing a player week in and week out who's going, I don't care anymore. I'm off at the Barca in the summertime. And I've Why done do I everything I've done here. It's time exactly. to move yeah. on. You're well, playing the same players because you have no depth. That's because the thing, though. Your, your midfielders Why are playing center back. Why is he getting cr- not getting criticized as much as Thiago? That's on whoever's. I, I, I'm a Lucas. Like. Lucas, I'm a. I'm gonna just say it's just that typical. I don't know. If it's just maybe the, how you know Premier League fan bases are, but they like to pick a, sca- a scapegoat. And well, they're gonna see a the big money signing. signing yeah, exactly. I think like, I, I, I do think mentality. I do think Thiago's been underwhelming since moving to Liverpool. I know you'll disagree with that because he does off the ball work and he has his passing or whatever. But I just think he's been underwhelming. But that's been Liverpool as a whole team this season has been underwhelming. So it's not on just Thiago. It's not on just Wijnaldum. It's not on just any. It's on the whole team underwhelming, underperforming, and really disappointing. Honestly, Sadio Mane disappointing this season. Mo Salah disappointing. Firmino. I whoa 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 whoa. I don't think Salah has been disappointing. He's been one of the. He's been disappointing top recently. Top I think he's been yeah, disappointing top, top in twenty twenty one. The man yeah. does more okay. dives and shots on target. He still is a, he's still leading score in the league with 17. Which is kind of incredible, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of uh, your midfield, Your midfield is, is weak because mainly your midfielders, your spine in your midfield at least, is playing a center back, yeah. Henderson and, and Fabinho. It was nice seeing you know, Fabinho and Keita playing in the midfield towards the end of the match because actually we saw the best, some of the best midfielders at the club playing there. Uh, I, but I, I think... 100% that finish? I think Liverpool just have to try a, a different, something different. Get, make some risks, especially against these teams that have a low block. I don't know. And I think it's time to have like guys like Gini Wijnaldum, James Milner to leave the club. I think Liverpool should probably sell one of the front three to fund something else. I like. There's too many players yeah. in, at the club right now who've er, achieved as much as they could at the club. The cycle... The cycle was expected to end soon. I didn't expect this cycle to end so drastically like this, but... It was bound to happen at some point. It's okay, Lucas. I, I know what it's it? like to have a team in the cycle. <laughs> I, I yeah, I've been in a cycle for seven that. years. <laughs> so maybe so, maybe uh, bring back Ricky Lambert. <laughs> no, but, but Lucas is right. Well, I, mean, I said this a couple of podcasts ago that I said the overhaul that's needed at Liverpool is, is quite extensive, I think, in terms of players that need to probably be, be lost and shed some dead weight. You have a lot of fringe players who I don't think are good enough. You have a lot of players in your starting eleven currently who I don't think their heart is on is, is in Liverpool at the moment. It's a big summer. It's going to be a big next, does it even like six to twelve months for Liverpool in terms of, of rebuilding mm-hmm. and and coming back. Jurgen Klopp definitely a manager that can do it. Definitely has connections. Here's to the thing, look at, I was going to ask Lucas real quick. I mean, this this question's been brought up many times. I think it's time you finally say it. Is Klopp going to get the sack? Yeah. I, 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 sorry, sorry. Give us a, and can I, I'll just, based, this was based on this. We ju- we did in our stream today, we got a donation from someone. We didn't read out the message. It's from Seb, thank you. It says, love the podcast I listen to all the time. I got a question. Is it time to consider sacking Klopp? He's been a great manager in the past few years, and he has a lot of injury problems. But it's no excuse. This team shouldn't be losing six home games. In a row. I mean, just they, give it to sh- us they shouldn't be losing six home games, but sacking Klopp, what does that solve? Yeah. 
What does that yeah, solve? I, like, I don't think it does. And are you going to bring in a better manager than Jurgen Klopp? No, you're not. Do you think? Do you think Jurgen Klopp's heart has been elsewhere a little bit more this season due to his off-field issues at home and everything? I mean, I'm sure he's been affected by like how Pep Guardiola yeah. has was affected when yeah. his mother passed away, when Mourinho was affected, when his father passed away those years ago at Manchester United. I think I'm sure it affects him, but it's not something. I mean, it is something that you can overcome. Like, look at Pep. Look. Pep has been. Pep had a bad season last year. People were criticizing him heavily because, with the team he had, he really shouldn't have been that mm-hmm. far behind Liverpool that season. But sometimes, with injuries and with players leaving, things don't work out. But you make a few more signings and it rejuvenates. I messed up that word, but it does that to the squad. I, I, we know yours. I th- Liverpool's I think, having what City did last season. That's, I think yeah, it's, it's, really it's more drastic really than that, to be honest, because really Liverpool shouldn't COVID, be losing all these games. No, I, but then again, I a lot COVID of injuries affecting, do cause problems, and yeah, COVID's it's not I a normal season. Without I, I think doubt. it's affecting mentally because I think Liverpool currently are in a spot where they almost feel trapped within a negative atmosphere. You know, they're bad performances, bad team vibes, and they're stuck together. You know, they're they're not. It's not like they can go out and socialize or or or, or, or do anything really they're kind of trapped within this same group of people. So the negative mentality starts rolling and it picks up steam and maybe they're just in a negative mind spot. Oh. Jurgen Klopp could be in a negative mind spot and he can't inspire his team when he's not inspired himself. You know, it, it's it's a big wheel. and oh. it, 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 Unfortunately, it, it turns very quickly. I'll just finish it off with this. Uh, you can't run forever. Whether you're a runner, whether you're a professional athlete, or whether with the play style Liverpool have been playing this season and or in the yeah. previous seasons where they were one of the highest teams in running. So, and you can't do that forever. People burn out. People can't keep going. And unfortunately, that's happening right now. It's been happening for months. I think something has to change. A risk needs to be t- taken within the squad so that something, so that this doesn't end up as a complete embarrassment as much as it is already. But that doesn't Before take away we, what uh... Fulham has done today. I think Fulham deserves full credit, yeah. and I hope they do stay up. I was going to say, before we move on from this game, I just want to say a big shout out to Fulham. Fantastic three points. Great result for them. Great defending. Yeah. Well, great not even that. And they're, they're you know, almost out of the I was going to mention Fulham. Uh, you know, compared to what happened during the midweek, Fulham got very un- unlucky against Tottenham, right, Greg? Yeah. Do you want to just kind of talk about that as well? Because that was a very controversial moment, which was well, concerned I mean, about what. Yeah. Of course, most people probably know what happened, but just they. Uh, Davins and Sanchez cleared the ball onto Lamina's hand or arm, and when it's by his side, so it shouldn't have been, like it wouldn't have been a handball. But because it led to a goal scoring opportunity, which actually was a goal, it doesn't count instantly. And then, so there's a big controversy with that. But it's that at the time, it was the rules. That's it. It's is mm-hmm. correct. The ref made the right decision. It's it's the rules. But the next day, they changed the rules. <laughs> the rules are being changed for so like and Mid-season. and they say it's not because of that game, but it kind of clearly then, is. I know, so. um, yeah, because I was watching the King game with you. I think and we just knew it was bullshit. And uh, actually, funny enough, uh, re- legendary referee Pierre Luigi Colina came mm-hmm. out and he had a little, some comments why they regarded as the best referee of the 20th century. He told Graham Paul to look at. That's what he told Graham Paul apparently. He needs to look at a player's hand when he elbows another player. If his hands are in a fist, it is deliberate. If the fingers are spread, it isn't, apparently. That's, so I don't know if that's towards... That's just elbowing, I mean, but... It's fair, it's fair. Pierre, we need Pierre. We need Luigi, Pierre Luigi right now. Make him VAR. Make him look at every decision. <laughs> <laughs> he just sits just, in the room all day. Just, just watch this game, man. <laughs> Uh, but let's move on. on. Just quickly to yeah. West Brom, yeah. Newcastle, nil-nil. That's enough uh, That result... I mean, the result yeah. all, all really does is it helps Fulham a little bit it's in a ba- terms of what, their three it's, points. It's a bad result for both of them. West Brom, yeah. that, us winning and West Brom not winning probably means relegation. I heard it was a I, terrible I game. So, I, but, no, Lucas, I'm sure that was a terrible game. Um, I, as we are speaking, it is 4-1 Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, Gareth Bale with a brace and Harry Kane with a brace. Yeah, it's good to see I, Bale I one of the goals. Uh, performing uh, again. How the fuck? Uh, assist, assist how did we draw for them four? How, how did we draw them nil nil? Crystal. Now Spurs are beating four one, but we've got Spurs to City. are they? They're resurging again. This is this the, the they, headache they of right are, there. They that right there is that meme Craig. with the, the math in his head. <laughs> Craig, Craig, you understand? That's the headache of being a Man United supporter. Like how? 
the fuck does this add up? But that's where like I'm all like that's where I'm like confident with Fulham as well. We we only lost one nil. We probably deserve better in that one nil game against Spurs, and they're going out and crushing other teams right now. Honestly, so yeah. I think Spurs are they finally have Bale. They're finally doing the Sun Bale Harry Kane. And then they have mm. someone in between, whether it's... Lucas Moura was also Mora, starting Dele today, Alley. yeah. Was, are you sc- yeah, and afraid of Spurs it's... in the Europa League? No. You're not no. afraid of Spurs? Be- no, because uh, it's just because they beat us 6-1 once because of a dumb, the dumbest red card I've seen in a long time. So <laughs> it, It's whatever, man. Okay, we're second in the league. Where are they? Struggling to get in the top four. Well, we'll see where they get, can go. Get out of here, Jose. Uh, if they win this, don't they go into, like, Six or something? Uh, uh, yeah, they do, Greg. Uh, but other teams do have games in hand, including Everton and West Ham. But yeah, let's move on to Saturday's we'll game. Touch on Spurs before when that game. Um, I do want to start with Burnley Arsenal. Tire fire. Yeah, it this one. This was this um, was interesting. Um, Arsenal did. Um, Ar- Arsenal did open the scoring first. Um, with a Pierre Emerick bombing in the sixth minute. And then the Burnley equalizing goal. Um, I don't know how or what or why. Basically, um, Bert Leno plays the ball to, I believe it was Xhaka, Xhaka. who then decides, I'm going to clear this ball at Chris Wood. It hits Chris Wood and goes in the back of the Arsenal goal. <laughs> Arsenal fan TV had one of the best reactions I've ever seen. they just like, what is happening right now? Fair enough. Um <laughs> But this game was also plagued with a lot of VAR issues. Um, there was a call uh, for handball um, that I believe should have been an Arsenal penalty. Nicolas Pepe uh, tried to cross the ball in. I forget who. I think it was Eric Peters, I want to say. He had his arm out extended, hits him right in the arm, and it's not a penalty. I did not understand the reasoning behind that. I I don't know. Um the second one was Arsenal had a shot on target and it was originally deemed a red card for a handball uh, against a Burnley defender. Again, I forget who it was. So it like but stopped it from going in and it hit the cross. It stopped him. After. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But VAR takes a look at it is deemed to go off his shoulder, not a handball. Uh, the red card is rescinded, not a penalty. And it's a goal kick for, um, or there's a corner kick for Arsenal. But the one against Eric Peters, uh, Nicholas Pepe, I don't understand how that was not a penalty. Does, does anyone have any any insight, Lucas, usually? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I know hey, sometimes I, I, they don't give penalties when issue. it's so close. I know, like, against Liverpool-Chelsea, there's a point where the ball hit N'Golo Conte's hand, but it was very close, and uh, they didn't call anything about it. But it's a tough one because I feel like if the handball is preventing the player from getting the ball to, from point A to point B, it, in many cases, should be counted as a foul, unless if the hand is literally there not moving. Like, if a hand is, like, moving towards the ball, for sure. Stretched. Like, VAR didn't even look at it. Like, VAR did not alert the on-field referee at all. I heard uh, there was a the VAR game, check. They looked it, but, like, they no, didn't tell no. A second half, VAR official Kevin Friend saw no reason to bring the incident to Mariner's attention. That's what uh, that's what official here. Yeah, so they but did check we, it, but they didn't notify the referee. VAR, but they, they didn't know. Okay, but M- Mikel Arteta after the game goes, if the first one is not a penalty, honestly, someone has to come to the training ground and explain to me what a handball is. It cannot be any clearer. I agree with him. Uh, 100%. It's 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 a mess. It really is. I, yes. I don't I don't understand it. <laughs> Sorry, what? You completely froze there, so we were just started laughing. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, I mean, they can hear you. They can hear what you said. They can hear you. I, it's just, it's just, it was me. Sorry, I just. Oh. You're good. You're good. Okay. No, I, I agree with you though, Liam. It's like, it's just the rules this season. It's just like, it, one player, one team will get that as a penalty, and then the other team doesn't. It's just, it's not consistent, and it's what it's. I don't know. It's so weird with that. Laura is just at the end of the day, pissing me off. At the end of the day, Arsenal, poor result, 1-1 versus Burnley. Burnley give them credit. You know, they get a big point there. It helps them in their season because I know they they were struggling for points mm-hmm. for a little while. Um, it's mad really, that how Liverpool have been so bad, yet we're still ahead of Arsenal. Shit. Yes, crazy. yes, it really it's been, has. It's, well, it's, look, it's one of the weirdest seasons for once. Everton's above <sighs> you. 
<laughs> so I'm sorry to start. We'll point that again, but Leicester um, City did get a two-one victory over Brighton. Um, a big win there for the Foxes. They've been in poor form as of recently. Inacho and Amarty. Amarty wins it in the 87th minute for them. Um, Brighton did open the scoring first through Adam Lalana in the 10th minute. It's not a good result for Brighton. Uh, they're right down there in the relegation battle. They're tied with points uh, with Fulham at the moment, so. They need to definitely start playing the football. I know they can. They're actually a very good team to That's watch. That's the thing. I, I I feel like Fulham and Brighton are like the same situation. It's like they play yeah. good football. The results just didn't come for them this season. I it's just like, like if Brighton get relegated, that'd be a shame to football. <laughs> Maybe I won't go too far I, to say I, it's I, a shame I, to football, I, but I agree. It'd be such a shame if they I got know relegated. what you mean. It's they, they play such a they play an attractive style of football, and it's like. What is it like the expected goals forward thing that you mentioned, right? Expected like points. they'd be like, yeah, there's stuff like that. They'd be up there. Like, they'd be oh, like Brighton and, also, Brighton have also dropped 17 points from winning positions this season. It's the most in a single Premier League campaign ever. <laughs> like, wow. it's, I mean, if it's they were able to score their chances, just... then maybe it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah. I'm. Re- I just remember when the, earlier in the season when they played Manchester United, and like, aside from that stupid VAR controversy that happened at the end of the game. Uh, they had so many chances to, like, they were losing for a while. They eventually tied it, but they had so many chances to equalize the game and enough chances to really win the game in itself. And I think that's the story of their season. I didn't get to catch this game against Leicester, unfortunately. I was very busy, but uh, they definitely need to get some wins. I think they're a better team than Newcastle. I think they should be able to outdo them yeah. by the end of the season. And I think it's the same I'm with Fulham, with but... Football can be weird sometimes. That result, though, that um, result does does put Leicester up to third. I mean, 53 points, 28 matches played. Leicester, I mean, can they hold on to Champions League? That, that That's the ultimate goal for them, if they can hold on to that, that top four. What else? I, did, I, I mean, I think they, they still have FA Cup, right? So, yeah. But. yeah, they got eliminated from the Finishing, Europa League. Embarrassing. Yeah, league. very, very bad. Uh, finishing off Saturday, though, Southampton picked up a 2-0 victory over Sheffield. I watched they this game, that. actually, and Sheffield weren't terrible. Um, Southampton just capitalized on a couple chances, though, and, and ultimately went their way. And then Villa and Wolves drew 0-0 in a very disappointing result there. But that was the Premier League. Anything else we want to talk about before we move on? Uh, I just want to say that, that the championship's actually been really interesting. I mean, I've been watching, okay, but Neil Warnock. Really, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing else I want to comment on. But uh, Neil Warnock is just he got really frustrated at some of the um, calls that have been going his way. He's not been happy with the officiating. Uh, he said the penalty at Stoke the other night was just scandalous. They must be laughing their heads off at the minute, but what comes what around goes wrong? around. I'm sure we'll see What's some in the championship next year. <laughs> Greg, uh, Lucas, but Lucas, you okay? Uh, were Barnsley like really bad last season? They were bad at the beginning, and then I think they started. Cause weren't they recently promoted last season? Mm-hmm. They Cause... got promoted. The Cause they, they yeah, the think, last uh... season aren't they're sixth now? They haven't That's lost a in a while. Shock I was gonna say. I was gonna. So I'm just gonna say. Sorry. I'm gonna go back to what I was talking about with Neil Warnock. Like essentially, what he's wanting is he's actually saying we need VAR in the championship. He doesn't like. He, he thinks VAR has his issues, and they're still trying to figure it out. But he's VAR in because he needs it right now. I think it's cost. It's costing his uh, t- side some points. So um, yeah, as much as you hate it, it's also kind of needed, right? If you are a fan of the championship and checking our podcast, how about you check out our career mode on FIFA 21? We are taking on the championship, all five of us versus each other. Look for the channel. They're, they're Another fantastic. funny thing from War, uh, Neil. He says, I'm sure I'll get an apology now from the referee, uh, the referee director at the professional game. As I've had three or four in the last weeks, he said, I've had that many apologies. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> so, that's the thing they don't have. <laughs> That's yeah, the thing they I don't they it. don't have the they don't have it. So. Uh, All right. Before we so move let's, on from the Premier League, on. very 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 quickly before we move on to the Premier League, uh, big Sorry. games on Monday when this podcast is uploaded. Chelsea play Everton, huge game, and West Ham versus Leeds. Those are two very very good games and will dramatically affect that top six race at the moment. But yes, let's move on to Der Classic, Kurtozinho, baby, your boy, you guys, Lewandowski. 
<laughs> so a lot of people are wondering, uh, we were supposed to have a watch along with this, but then our schedules kind of got messed up. Uh, things Just were communicated up. well yeah, between us. So apologies, guys. We'll try not to have that happen often. Uh, yeah, let's get to the Bundesliga. You know, Der Klassiker, one of the biggest matches in Europe. Obviously, Bayern always find a way to win this against Dortmund, especially in the league. But it did seem like Dortmund was going to win this for a bit. With Erling Haaland showing his goal-scoring prowess early on in the first 10 minutes. Two big goals. And then, of course, Bayern ended up winning later on. But Well, that's uh, the thing. I literally uh, just, like, look at my... Up. I didn't get to catch the match, but I look at my phone, and I see that's 2-0. I'm like, what the hell's going on? I'm assuming Haaland's going. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, he did, okay. Yeah, it was, it was and then him. I'm like, wow, so Dorman's doing pretty good. Uh, and The uh, annoying part, I mean, look, yes, we're talking about the match, but the annoying part is, like, always now people are like, oh, Mbappe, Haaland, who's better? I'm like... I just appreciate the man. I'm watching this game. I don't care about Mbappe. I don't care who's versus next next Messi versus Ronaldo. I care about football, man. Shut up with your comparisons. Foden's good. Felix is good. Greenwood will be good. So, like there's gonna be so many good young Greenwood talents coming good. through. Shut up. Okay, anyways, that's my rant over. <laughs> wow. Um, um, Lucas, it, it was, Lucas, it was, it was two the match. big goals from Holland in the first ha- in the first ten minutes, there, and then and then. I was already talking before he said your name. You want to fight me? I'll fight you. <laughs> My God. Lewandowski. Want, yeah, Liam, Liam, Liam. You didn't watch the match? Okay, Lucas, I, go. I watched the, the game. highlights of this game, sir. Well. Okay, Lucas, go. I mean, I thought... I was surprised by the start by Dorman for sure, as what were most people. Calm down, Liam. <laughs> uh, but I think you have to consider this. Bayern don't lose too many Dirk Klaskers, especially in the last five years. And if we look back back to maybe like this past decade, the Dirk Klaskers Bayern have lost. Uh, was it 2011 against Dortmund where Robin missed the penalty Lewandowski scored, or was that 2012? They they lose that game, they lose the league. Uh, I remember they lost the DFB Pokal match in the semifinals against Dortmund where they dominated. They lost that match. Dortmund went on and won the final. Um, and there might have been another one as well that, that Dortmund won and that caused Bayern a lot of problems. But Bayern, I think they're a club that no, they can't lose this match because if they lose this match, bad things are going to happen for them in the league. Because if they lost this match, if they drew this match, they would be behind RB Leipzig. But they got the win and they're back in first place. Um, and I think Bayern, they reacted very well after going 2-0 down. I think... After that, the 30th awesome. minute, I think they're the yeah, better team for the rest of the game. That's what I was going to say. was it, it, it only ended 4-2, which on paper looks like a very close game. But if you look at the stats-wise, Bayern has 66% possession, yeah. 27 shots, 9 on target, to Dortmund's 4 shots, 3 on target. It was a I Bayern was, was, domination. Well, now keep it just, this in mind, though. Yeah. Keep, this, keep this in mind because Dortmund... A lot of Dortmund supporters were not expecting much out of this game because a lot of their good players were injured. Guerrero, Sancho, yeah, that's true. I think there's a few others as well. And mm-hmm. I mean, like a guy named Tiggers or Tigas came onto the field later, and he almost had yeah. actually an incredible goal. <laughs> he took a, like a volley. From yeah, half. I saw that. <laughs> but uh, no, the way I, well, I mean, the way I view Bayern Munich is just like it always takes them like ten minutes to actually get in the game. Once those 10 minutes are up, it's Bayern domination. That's in their DNA, I swear. It was in the Champions League final. Every time I watch Bayern, I swear. I don't know. That's how I like, see it. You know how I said a couple weeks ago time. where uh, you don't want to score too early against Bayern? Yeah. Yeah. Right there, there is it. <laughs> but, well, Lucas, tell me about Big man, big tell, brain. Tell me about your Polska brother. What are you talking about? He's going to... He's, he's likely going to go down as the greatest ever Bundesliga player if he keeps up that scoring rate. I mean, good. he's on he's pace good. to break Gerd Müller's Bundesliga record. Uh, he's more than just on pace. I think he will break it, considering how many goals he's already scored in the league. Uh, stats-wise, Lewandowski has 31 goals already. Now, of course, how you know, many games? haters will say... Uh, it was like 23 or something? 24. 24 it's matches 24. played this season. Yeah. Now, haters, haters will be like, Oh, it's a Farmers League. It's so easy for him. I mean... Bro, Dortmund are in sixth, Wolfsburg's third, Leipzig. There's a title race, shut up. Um, Yeah, like I was trying to say, uh, Gern Miller's record is what, 40 goals, Lucas? I think, is it 40 or 41? It might be 40. Yeah, there, I saw a statistic. It's one. Uh, so, uh, very impressive. 40. Yeah, Gern Miller's record is 40 goals um, in the 1971-72 season. 
and it has not been bro- broken since then. The closest has been Gerd Mueller himself with 38. Yeah. Lewandowski, I mean, man, he's just, uh, he's special. He's such a talented goal scorer. He's, a, he's in such a good squad at the moment where you expect yeah. him to score a goal a game. You expect it. I mean, it, it's incredible what he's producing right now. And how old is, is Lewandowski? 32. 31. And it's like, it's like, like I don't look, I don't see him slowing down him because he, he doesn't rely on pace. He doesn't rely on physicality. He just relies on just absolute clinical finishing. So, I mean, 34, and the crazy 35 thing is, year old Lewandowski could still be performing at this a, level. Here's the stat right now. Uh, games right now, Lewandowski's tw- uh, 23. He's played. He's averaging a goal every 63 minutes while when Gerd Mueller uh, had set his record, 34 games, he was averaging a goal every 76 minutes. Yeah, so this so is insane, quite honestly. Yeah. And if, like, with the age thing, like, if if you're a player that doesn't rely on pace, I think mm-hmm. the older you get, the better it is because the older you get, the smarter you are on the pitch. Yeah. Now, the only thing you that need to w- worry about is potentially getting more injuries as you get older because you can't escape that when you get you get more tired. You lose more fitness. That's a problem that happens to everyone eventually. I think. I think for Lewandowski, he's in the absolute purple spell of his career. Let's yeah. enjoy him while he is. Let's let, let's just let's just enjoy a fantastic. I think he'll be. I think he'll be a, around longer than most people think, just because of uh, how healthy he is as a human, how fit yeah. he is compared to some footballers. So, and yeah. Uh, we'll, other we'll results. quickly cover the rest of the Bundesliga because, like you said, there is a title race happening, and that title race involves RB Leipzig, who won 3 0 over Freiburg. Um, big result for there. Uh, Wolfsburg, who are third, they did lose 2 1 versus Hoffenheim. Um, a big result for Bayer Leverkusen as they beat Gladbach 1 0. And uh, Schalke, they got a point 0 0 versus Mainz. I mean, job, to- yeah, that was the uh, El Toilet boy- Bowl. Uh, the bottom teams of the Bundesliga wow. going at it. Of course, it finishes nil wow. nil. Wow. I know last podcast, uh, somebody got, was not happy with the fact that we laughed at Schalke. Cause I they, laugh they at they you lost. here. I laugh at you but, now. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's, like, like he's I a clown. Okay, don't listen to him. Uh, clearly, he's got the laugh of one. He's got the face of one. Sorry, man. We're more I laughing love about you. the shock. Get the shock of them me. just sacking another Get coach. Fucked. It's okay. I look like a fraudulent yeah not really la- yeah it's just like laughing at the situation more it's, it's just, just, it's, just it's like we're laughing but we're also like feeling so terrible yeah, well, like <laughs> laughing because it keeps getting re- more ridiculous as the day gets on Honestly. yeah well this looks like gamer girl marco royce thanks man <laughs> what's even supposed to mean <laughs> Are we moving on uh, to La Liga now? Yeah, let's quickly move yeah, on sure. to La Liga because there was the Madrid, Madrid derby. derby. And Good it, job, everybody. It finished 1-1. One, one, one. One. Go ahead. Lucas, I give you the floor. Okay, thank you for letting me speak for once. <laughs> uh, I only got to catch the last 10 minutes of this game, but uh, from what I understand, Atletico Madrid were the better team in the first half. Suarez, he scored. Uh Fantastic play for Atletico Madrid this season. The second half, Real Madrid came out and bounced back significantly, and they scored a pretty nice goal, give and go with Benzema and Casemiro, I think. And, yeah, it was in the 88th minute, Real Madrid tied it up. I think I thought mm-hmm. just before that goal, though, uh, Luis Suarez had a pretty simple ball to play to an Atletico Madrid player on the wing. He over overshoots it, and then Real Madrid go back up and score. So... Small margins in this game are in football in general, but there are several instances where Atletico Madrid probably could have sealed this game, but they weren't able to. And now we get a little bit more interesting of a La Liga title race. Barcelona do win on the weekend as well with a 2-0 victory over Osasuna and are only three points behind Atletico Madrid, but Atletico Madrid do play Athletic Club in midweek, and I am saying Athletic too much, so let's move on. Okay, that was interesting. Wow. Uh, also, speaking spoken. of uh, La Liga, I mean, Barcelona, uh, Spain in general had a big week. Uh, they did the Ramontanda, how do you say it? They they came back against Sevilla to go to the... What, what, what happened? Copa del Rey, yeah. Um, it was 2-0 Sevilla in the yeah. first leg. Yeah. Then uh, <laughs> Just so many goddamn cups in football. <laughs> I was just like, which, which cup is it? And then from what I remembered, yeah, Barcelona... 
scored two goals, including a late goal by PK to tie the aggregate up. I think uh, Sevilla also got a red card just before that. Mm-hmm. And in extra time, Braithwaite scored the winner, and I think Sevilla got another red card. Lord, Braithwaite. And Barcelona, go sure, Barcelona supporters not here to talk about this. No yeah, Matt. unfortunately, um, Matt wasn't exactly. able to come can, here. Can but we yeah, talk about some of the dramas that surrounded Barcelona. I know, I know, we talked about it last week, uh, but I mean, Bartomeu, he's uh, gone to jail. Oh right, that was kind of we, a big we, moment. Matt and I did record. We recorded a small TikTok about this, but yeah. So Bartomeu got arrested, him and I think a few other lads. Uh, they didn't have a good time with the police. The police broke down the door. Hey, you did bad things. You're coming with us. And, yeah, uh, handcuffs happened. I, I would was... hope they don't say it like that. <laughs> you did bad things. NCIS <laughs> with us. Wars. Hey, I imagine if it you was, did I imagine it was like Come with I, me. I, I imagine it was a scene from, like, Pulp Fiction with Samuel Jackson busts down the door and, you know, talks about, you know, that verse from the Bible. Let's imagine oh how it went God, down. That... <laughs> <laughs> I love using movie references in football. That was so one of my anyways. favorite ever was moments right there. I like that. That was good. <laughs> so. Anyways. Anyways. Yes, that was a big week for Barcelona in terms of off-the-field drama and antics. I mean, Bartomeu... Uh, as Lucas says, he was not paradise for Barcelona. Um, many bad things happened. Many bad things. A lot of corruption. That's what he was arrested yeah. for, corruption. So we'll see what happens in the following weeks to come and months as, as he, I assume, goes to trial or whatnot. But, uh, but yes, uh, the big talking point, of course, was the Madrid derby. And Barcelona are still in the title race against Atletico. Yeah. Real Madrid are as well. It's just, it, it's, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about La Liga right now. It's still really close. It is. Some, I'm sure some Barcelona fans wanted Real Madrid to win. I'm sure some wanted it to end how it did. And either way, Atletico Madrid didn't win, so that's a positive for Barcelona. In Syria, I heard there was a lot of drama between Juventus and Lazio. It did end 3-1 Juve, but I heard there was a lot of drama. Our Discord was, was kind of popping off about... How Lazio should have done something. I don't really know. I didn't watch this game because I really, quite frankly, no longer care about Juventus. They hurt me. They broke my heart. <laughs> I've given why. up on them as a club. Um, I think uh, Ronaldo should leave. Uh, there's better pastures for him. Come to I'm Celtic. United. We need you. Come to Celtic. The club can't even afford him. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> made, uh, Juventus did win, but so did AC Milan. They picked a 2-0 vic- victory over Hellas Verona. Um, we saw Roma beat Genoa 1-0, and currently as we speak, it is 2-0 Napoli over Bologna, ultimately for the Serie A title race and table. Well, the big what one tomorrow, means, the game tomorrow, Atalanta and Inter Milan plays. That'll be a very good game, because mm-hmm. Inter Milan are top of the table, still on 59 points. Three points behind them is AC Milan on 56 you then got Juve in third on 52. So, I mean, uh, yes, the also title just, race is uh, not over, but hey. Just an uh, update to the, the viewers. Uh, we do have a, pl- a couple of watch-alongs planned for the coming week with Champions League back. Um, uh, I, we do have a schedule in place for those who want to hear. Uh, coming this week, we have, of course, March 9th, the Champions League between Dortmund, Sevilla, Juve, Porto, Porto. Uh, March 10th, Liverpool, Leipzig, Barca, PSG. And then March 11th, we're doing United versus AC Milan in the Europa League. And March 14th, Spurs versus Arsenal. There you go. Big old so you can catch Derby that. There. Yeah. All, All our will be on, reactions. Uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash the 90th minute official. Drop a follow uh, there yeah. and check it out. But yes, um, anything else we want to talk about before we get into uh, questions? Or should we talk about um... French League? Oh, oh, wait, well, Liam, Liam, it's time. You you avoided yeah. it, mate. Okay. I haven't yeah. avoided it. I've been waiting. I 55. Avoided. 55 titles, man. Debatable, Holy shit, but I'm sure. Big. Debatable, but sure. Give um, us your thoughts. Listen, listen, ultimately, we knew this was coming from a long, long time ago. We knew Rangers <laughs> were going to win the league this year. And like I said during our, disc, or during our, our stream, I said, listen... Congratulations, Rangers. You've won it. I mean, you, you deserve it. You've been by far the best Scottish team this year. You're doing very well in Europa League, and I'm, I'm happy for you guys in Europa League. I'm happy you guys are, are doing that. I'm disappointed at Celtic more than I'm uh, upset at Rangers. I mean, I don't hold anything against Rangers. They just performed well. I, I'm i disappointed at Celtic for how we performed and how we went about a very important season for us. 
I would have loved a title race. I would have loved to see like the invincible Brendan Rogers Celtic team versus this Rangers team. It would be a great title race. It would have gone down to like the last match day kind of thing. It would have been it would be fantastic to watch. Well, okay. Ultimately, yeah, the, yeah. My my question is though, would you rather it like end with a nil nil like Celtic how they did there, or would you rather Rangers beat you? At Celtic Park, what is it, like, next week or something? Or, like, a couple weeks away? And get it there. Like, would, I, would I rather have, like, Rangers win it today or I, I, win it against us? Yes. Oh, God, uh-huh. like, win it today. Go ahead. You can have it. I don't care. Like, well, so, no, that's, a, cause that's probably what terms. would have happened if you'd won yeah. today. That's all I'm saying. So. I, but the thing is, I, I've already come to terms with this. We knew months ago that this title was no, going to Rangers. I mean, the way we performed, especially around Christmas there, was absolutely shocking. So, I don't know. Credit to Steven Gerrard. Credit to, to Rangers. Is it 55 or is it 1? I don't really care. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, they've won the league. That's all that matters to me. Um, Celtic, get your thumb out of your ass. Fix this club. I don't want a decade of Rangers dominance. I don't want that. Will that'll Celtic give a guard, in, a guard of honor? Oh, we probably will. And that'll make me really upset. Because <laughs> we're classy, Lucas. We're classy people. <laughs> Oh, now Steven G has more titles than Yai in the last season series. I can no longer say I've ever seen Jared win the league. I can't say that anymore. Pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. Nah, he'll never win the Premier League. Five years later. Fair. <laughs> but like yes, so um, that's going to haunt me. Let's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's move into questions, boys. All right, here's one question I got from TikTok. I'll try to find more if I can, but... Yeah. One question. <laughs> this man. Guys, on YouTube, speaking of this, ask us questions in the comments. Yeah, we we want to answer questions, honestly. Like, in, Well, to be honest, we people all, were we, asking we, questions in the past, but when we had a lot of TikTok questions, we kind of forgot by the end because we got tired. So, yeah. sorry. Question, here's a question from Dyson Hoover. Wow, that's the name. Uh, who do you think is the best team to exist outside of Europe? I think Lucas might be able to answer this. I want to. I was, I was like the first team that came to my mind was Santos. I mean, there's Santos. Uh, you could probably. But say then you got the teams one that go to the, one of the South American teams. You could definitely say like maybe even Boca yeah. Juniors or River Plate. Boca Juniors. Is, is you could yeah. you could also throw throw in Zamalek in there from Egypt because no, I, yeah, I was the Egyptian club that won like fifty six. Ty doesn't want to say something yeah. like that. They were the most it. successful club ever, technically based on trophies, or at least outside of Europe. They're, they, they've been one of the best teams, definitely Al in Africa. Al Aiel, Al Aiel. I pronounce that terribly. I know it's A L A H L Y. Uh, they Al Ali. Al okay, sure. They've won 118 trophies in their club's history. I mean, that's pretty Egyptian crazy. winning machine. Uh, 41 Egyptian league titles. In, there you go. Good job, Egypt. Yeah. But, but there, there are some good managers. Um, manager, sorry. There's some good clubs outside of, of, of Europe, 100%. Um, there's some good Middle Eastern clubs. There are a lot of good uh, South American clubs. Like I said, Boca, River Plate, uh, Brazilian clubs as well. It's unfortunate that Europe just gets a lot of the some Mexican clubs, all the uh, all the attention. Yeah, Tigres recently. Yeah. But uh, here's another question from. Um, he asked. Opinions on players changing nationality if played for that nationality during underage. Miguel Antonio. Um. He's now Jamaican, according to to, to him. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with players wanting to play international football. Like I guess maybe if you're not good enough for the your main national team. Then, if you do have another nationality within you, then I, I don't see what's yeah. wrong with it. I've seen Kong Dave, he's playing, I think, for the... I don't remember what club. I, I, I want to say Congo. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. But, like, there's several players that just have... Because countries like England, France, Germany... Well, yeah, Germany, Portugal, many of those countries are starting to become really, really strong all over the place. And in the past, that you can't get into those club, you can't get into those teams. Yeah, so, yeah. You, it it's it, that's the choice. Like with players, it's would you rather like more win competitions and have be competitive, or do you want to just play for your 
country. Yeah. No, I, de- I, I I don't see much wrong with it. I mean, I know there's like a lot of the Irish supporters are angry at a couple of their players that switch nationalities to England. I completely get that, especially if you have two countries who are kind of rivals in a sense. But uh, but you have to give it to to the players who want to play international football, want to play the best team they can. A hundred percent. It's something that uh, I can understand. I can see. Right. Yeah, I think. I think it's not really a problem, like, because, like, it does, in these cases, it does, like, strengthen more countries, really. Makes, and if, ideally, you'd want, like, all these countries have good players coming through the ranks, but things like that, that takes a lot of time. Yeah. Was next question. Mm, I think that's honestly all I got from TikTok okay. recently. Well, we did have a TikTok so go tr- uh, video from this past week that did really well on our page i know last podcast we were talking about uh commentators who say players entire names instead of just their last name like we mentioned glenn murray uh ollie Mm -hmm. watkins harvey barnes harvey Harvey barnes Barnes. uh there there were some comments in there from people that say oh they they hear their commentators say that sometimes it's a bit different with international commentary and english commentary like I'm yeah. sure, uh, like someone said, like in Arabic they hear uh, Barnes, which I would un- understand that. Mm-hmm. I just feel like maybe it's probably a bit different with English commentators. Yeah. But is there any other names you guys can think of like that? Off the top of my head, it's it's tough to say. I mean, Ricky Lambert's maybe one. I don't really hear Lambert often, but that was a while back. This is really <laughs> random. I can't think of um, it. Scott Parker. <laughs> uh, maybe more of as a oh, manager. Okay. Scotty P. All right, I'll ask a couple Instagram here. Nothing wild. Uh, here's one, third one. How much of a chance do you think Rangers will have the Europa League, Liam? <sighs> I don't it's- know. I think they've been playing very well. I just, I just, are Rangers as good as these other teams in the Europa League? Are, are, are they going to beat a United really or AC Milan? I don't know, but but you you never know. It comes down to a single match. It's tough to so. say because the competition in 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 Scotland is so much so different from the rest of Europe in Europa League. So, what's going to happen when they actually play a Premier League team like well, United or a were, team like Milan or yeah, Spurs? They were fantastic in the round of thirty two. And so they're in the round of 16 right now, and they have a big match coming up. I think they got a little lucky in the draw. Like, they didn't come up against a Manchester United or AC Milan kind of thing, right? Of course, they came up against each other. But yeah, regardless, yeah, like, they play I'm very Praha. intrigued to see what they can do. Yeah. S- but Praha you can't, like, Lester, don't though. underestimate teams. Yeah. Slavia that That's Praha my point. Not a it's terrible like, team, yeah. Uh, but and I think that's Rangers exactly could potentially make it's, a dark horse run potentially a semi-final yeah, I, don't know. I think they can upset one of the big teams who i think they can upset arsenal i think they could upset most teams in this tournament outside of maybe manchester united and spurs but i think know, i know else... there's lots of rangers fans so i'd love to do hopefully they can come against them ac Milan or manchester united and just that'd be a great watch along yeah <laughs> no i i'm not against them. Uh, i'm not a... against them I, I wish them good luck kind of thing Here's a third question. Would you like to see a continental tournament? Ah, no. No, like, I think what he's meaning, like, is, you know, Europe versus South America. No, because Europe would probably win. Europe, there's it's Europe as cool, a plethora. Though. That's just... South be America would be very power- strong. Yeah, it's true. How but... do you make a starting 11 of all of Europe? My goodness. <laughs> My but em- I mean, Africa would be okay, right? I mean, I think it could be MSN interesting on paper. It's is, just... uh... Yeah, if they can yeah. actually like, if they can make it possible and make it good, then why not? But I don't know. That'd be wild. That'd be absolutely wild. <laughs> what would the yeah. starting eleven be for Europe, man? How do you pick that? <laughs> like <sighs> European All Stars versus the Monsters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so well, to answer two more questions here, most disappointing player this season for you, and most surprising player. I mean, my disappointing is probably the Martial as the United support order. Other than that, um, who has been my most surprising player this year? Disappointing is probably 
it, it's honestly probably like Timo Werner in terms of Premier League. Yeah, he's Timo just, Werner. He came in with so much. He was doing fantastic last year, and it just my disappointing player is going to be Sadio Mane, and my surprise player of the year is going to be Holland. How good he's actually been. You're surprised? He's doing this last season. I didn't think he was going to put uh, numbers I'll, up like this, Lucas. You said last honest. season. Lucas. Lucas, I'll give mine to I'm gonna I'm gonna go a United route and also non. I'm gonna go Ilkay Gundogan in a sense. I know he's good, but I didn't think he'd be like PFA That's player a, of the year yeah. good. Uh, Ruben Diaz has been yeah. a nice surprise as well. John and Stones. then Luke Shaw, you know he's he's playing uh, uh, very consistent, very well, scoring goals, creating chances, defending all right. So I like Luke Shaw this season. I think most surprising is like Luis Suarez. Which yeah. Just, I think you expect him to do good for Rafael Madrid, but he's top goal scorer in the league. And how like Barcelona fans last season and Barcelona in general made it seem like he was washed up, old, not needed anymore. It was it's great to see that he, he's able to find a place and actually still continue to perform. I think most disappointing. I think it's a tough one. I I'd say Juventus. Juventus in general. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have been pretty. And Dortmund, and Dortmund, yeah. Dortmund, yeah. especially, as a whole, as a team. Yeah. Juventus have been poor. They really have been. <laughs> oh, is there any other questions you want to answer, Wazzy, or should we wrap this up? Last one. Last one. Do you think the MLS is retirement league, or could it be more than that? It's definitely more. I than think. That. Definitely. It'll become more. I mean, it's viewed by those in Europe. I think it's got some exciting matches sometimes. Not the best quality football, but it's slowly becoming a good league. Slowly. I, I think, mean, it I definitely is I'm... where a lot of players do go to retire. Yeah. But I, it, I think it can be, and it is more than that. It is more than I that. Don't think... I just think it has a lot of problems, especially with like, you literally have to buy a spot in the league. And there's yeah. plenty of teams who've bought spots who are not worthy to be in a, a top division club in North America, I think. And there's so mm. many problems with, like, I know Wayne Rooney, when he was there, he complained a lot about how, like, how the minimum wages is really bad, how traveling is really bad, how they didn't really respect a lot of the players enough. Uh, they don't get treated as well as they should, I think. I know, like, mm. the big sports in America are good, they provide a lot of entertainment value, provide lots of revenue streams and things like that but I, I think in football it's just it's very hard to it's make that, that work as well sports. and make it seem as okay I think football yeah, is really important if, as a community uh, the... sport and I don't think in the yeah. MLS at least they make the most out of that unless if you have an owner that is willing to put money in but and that's the thing like if you're actually good really good you go to Europe or something. You mm. you get out of America. You I don't, don't think it's ever going to That's what I was, that's what I I was saying. I, yeah. I don't think the MLS is ever going to challenge the Premier League or La Liga or Serie A or anything like that. No. The MLS is a league that's going to be a stepping stone league. So if you're In a order young for American that happen, or a young, gonna be a young like... Canadian player, you want to start up. Like, look at Alfonso Davies. He's a perfect example. You want to build your career a little bit, get noticed, and then make your move to Europe. Well, here's the thing. If you look perform. at like, uh, you look at basketball, for example. Or hockey, ice hockey, because they're both very international sports. You know, all these players, they want to go to North America. They want to go play the NBA, the NHL. It's kind of like the same with North America. Everyone wants to go to Europe and play there. It's yeah. going to be some, there has to be some drastic cultural change. You know, you don't see ice hockey players in the NHL wanting, oh, my dream is to go play in Sweden. No. Yeah, exactly. No. So... But but I, I don't think I don't think the MOS kids themselves in terms of oh are we no exactly the they're, really they're not expecting that is it a, a retirement league is it a good place to retire if you're well, a so big it's, star? so you're make in a, a sense money, China you know? has also been then again yeah. China's dealing with their own issues that league is <laughs> it has a lot of problems right now but the thing I is, mean people want to live in yeah. sunny Los Angeles or Miami they want to make the money of the MOS they want to to have you know all that that, that superstardom kind of thing and it's fair enough I mean. It's yeah. also a good legal for young North American Even Zlatan. Talent. Zlatan didn't enjoy the MLS a lot. He, he saw issues with the whole pay-to-play system for his kids and just didn't like the whole way things were set up. So I think yeah. MLS has a lot of problems, but U.S. soccer has yeah. a lot of problems that they need to fix. Mm, it, yeah. Sometimes it's just too much about money, in my opinion. Yeah. When, it's yeah. Spo- yeah. when the sport's based off community. Yeah, I like that. American sports in general is all about money. 
Should we All wrap right. this up, boys? Yes. Yeah, please. that's a good podcast. That's been a fantastic podcast, honestly. It, it, we greatly appreciate you guys watching all the way through, especially. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. Drop a subscription if you are not. Check us out on Twitch, on TikTok, on Instagram, all that good stuff. Links are down in the description. Once again, mm-hmm. remember to check out Manscaped for the fantastic Lawnmower 3.0. Use code 90th at checkout to get 20% off plus free shipping. But from the four of us and Maddie, wherever he may be, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been yet another week in the beautiful game, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.